Holy shit, the Acolyte episode 4 just had my jaw hanging by the last few minutes. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for clicking on this. Today, we're talking about the Star Wars, the Acolyte episode 4. This is my spoiler review. So if you have not watched the new episode, definitely go check it out, then come back. And to kind of give a little bit of background context, if this is the first video you're watching of my coverage for the Acolyte, wasn't too excited for this. I love the idea that the marketing started. The marketing didn't really hook me in. And then the first two episodes I watched were phenomenal. And then I watched episode three and I was like, wow, this is a fantastic flashback. And episode four dives us deeper into this all. And again, from what I said from the first fight in the first big scene of episode one where they killed off Carrie Ann Moss, they continued to do the same. For some reason, I actually thought that we were going to save our Wookiee friend. And then all of a sudden, boom, he slashed when he turns around. I'm like, cliche. For a mystery like this where you're trying to hunt down a killer but phenomenal to say the least so i'm very excited to talk about this make sure to leave your thoughts down below hit that like and subscribe button are you enjoying the acolyte are you not i don't know if i'm alone in this because i've been watching like these early and just kind of like communicating with myself but like i am like very happy with this series so far and i'm really hoping that episodes five six seven and eight deliver the goods i hope they aren't crap i will be so disappointed this happens a lot with disney plus so let's just keep that in mind but with diving into this of course they head to the planet where our buddy i'm always gonna say his name wrong but kalnaka this wookie jedi they're trying to save him and we have may and her friend hunting him down in this forest while we have this band of jedi showing up and beforehand, the way that this episode opens up, I really like the moment that we got between Jackie, played by Daphne Keen, and Amanda Steinberg's character, O'Shea. And I like how they have this communication. Like, she comes and looks at her as she's training as a Padawan, and it's very nice to kind of have that because it's a nice parallel. And I'm curious to see if we get a flashback of seeing her train as a Padawan with Soul. I think that'll, that'll be an overall nice roundabout idea. But I think she kind of sees a little bit of herself inside of her. But then before she leaves, Soul is basically saying, I want to go here. I want to stop her. I think I have a way to stop May. And, you know, I think in a way, Soul may feel responsible for certain things. And again, my theory I talked about last week is I do think that while May destroyed a lot of that facility, I think those Jedi did end up killing all that cult. I think they were sent there to do that. And then they found out about the kids and it kind of changed their entire mission and I think if we were to have that, again, it adds to that sense of responsibility. Why does Soul care so much? He's the one Jedi out of everyone that's a little bit different and actually feels like he has a personality, a heart. So very interesting there. But of course, he comes, convinces her to go with him. They take this whole Jedi squad all the way down to this planet. And a lot of this episode, what I really loved about it, even though it is the shortest one yet, they make every minute and second count. And I was very infamously talking shit about the runtime of this series. And from the first two episodes to even like some of my pre-coverage before this, I was talking a lot of crap about this. And I still feel that if each episode was just a tad bit longer, it would make the show even better. But this is actually one of the few episodes that ends and flows through such a perfect manner that I had no issue with the runtime here. Um, I think they gave enough character development between all the characters to understand what choices they were making and where they were going. And specifically May, who makes a big twist in here where she screws over her friend and then decides, yeah, no, like, I'm not going to do that. Ends up saying that, yeah, I'm going to screw over this Sith guy that we've been working for and turn myself in. And I love that whole idea that she wants to make herself better and, in fact, look at different ideologies here. Well, as this is going along, she starts heading there, and boom! As she gets there, she falls. That a little creature looks at her, starts screaming. They all start running. She runs in there. And, again, the cliche thing, he turns around, and he's dead. Would you see that saber blast? We knew what had happened, and they were too late. The rest of the Jedi come out and saying... Hope, put your hands up, all this stuff. And eerily in the background, you see this dude just floating down and floating forward. Like, it is very, very creepy. And I love the mannerism. I love how the mask looked. I already like the design heading into the series, but I love how it still reflects here. You see the lightsaber flip up. All the Jedi tell her to run. They all flip out theirs. 
he throws her to the side or she who we don't know and they also are running and just basically just blows them back and that's where the episode ends and it made me just yell fuck i need more i need more that was such a phenomenally directed and written episode that again it developed each character for you to understand where they are feeling but again leaves that mystery just a little bit more that like this guy or thing or whatever obviously was using may still went and killed him so what is their grievance towards it? I still am predicting that it's probably Jodie Turner Smith's character. That's just my personal thing. But I could also end up seeing this be the big tie-in towards the entire Star Wars galaxy. And maybe, again, legends aside and timeline stuff aside, maybe some things are getting rearranged. Could it potentially be something connected to the future of the Sith? Like Palpatine, per se? Is this Plagueis? I could be, again, just theorizing, but could it be Plagueis' master? I, we, we don't know. We, we have no idea, and I think that intriguing layer for the deeper core Star Wars fans is what excites us because it doesn't just seem like this is going to be another faceless, cool mask, bad dude that we are excited about that ends up having no personality, no background. From that one shot, it was already badass, and I can't, again, wait to see what they do more with this character. I can't wait to see the next episode, episode five. I think that'll be such an exciting turn of events, and specifically to see, do we get another big feng fu sequence there, or do we get a giant lightsaber duel? Because they're all going to get back up. Someone's going to have to fight, and this is just exciting. Like, this episode excited me. And I really hope this doesn't end up falling downwards and making me disappointed. So definitely leave your guys' thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. Again, my one big issue I have with this is I still wish the episodes were a tad bit longer. But I loved it. And I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts again. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I already said that. But make sure, may the force be with us all.